Namaste. Today's little mini session is going to be about hip hinging. What is hip hinging? Hip hinging is when you fold at your hip joints rather than at your waist. For example, hip hinging, strong, straight back, hinging at your waist, folding. Okay? Now, as I hope you can tell, the second one is not always good for your back. So why do we, especially as Westerners, hip hinge rather than, or bend at our waist rather than hip hinging? Well, when we're infants and babies and we're learning how to walk and to get around, if we see something in the floor that we want, we don't generally squat and pick it up. If you notice, a baby will just hip hinge, pick up what he wants, and then come right back up. So at some point, we forget how to do that. Why? Well, there so, could be several reasons. Our lifestyle, we become sedentary as we age, especially now with all everything coming at us on our phone and on our computers. We sit a lot. When we sit a lot, our hamstrings become shorter. Our hip flexors become shorter. When we sit in a chair, we tend to have our pelvis tilted back. Okay? Instead of having the pelvis upright. So notice right now, if you're sitting, are you sitting on your sitting bones? Are you sitting behind your sitting bones? The sitting bones are your ischial tuberosities that touch the chair. So if you're sitting behind them, you've got your pelvis tilted back. Don't worry about that because guess what? Our chairs are designed that way. But that's another story. Okay, so let's work on gathering the mobility to hip hinge. First thing I'm going to show you is lying on your back. I call this position constructive rest. Your knees are bent, your feet are on the floor. Feet hip width distance, toes toward the end of your mat. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take our pelvis and we're going to tilt our pelvis so that the back of your waistband becomes closer to your comes closer to the floor. Now lift the pelvis up. Okay, that's tilting the pelvis forward. Press the back of the waistband down. Lift the back of the waistband up. So just doing this several times. Inhaling as you lift the waistband, exhaling as you press the back of the waistband down. So now you can see what's going on. This angle between your pelvis and your thighs is becoming smaller. That's your hip hinge. That's what we want. All right. After you've done that several times, that also looks a little bit like cat and cow from yoga, doesn't it? Let's roll to the side, and we're going to come up to standing. Next, we're going to be working on stretching the back of the legs, the hamstrings, the calf muscles. And I'm going to show you this using a chair. Any chair duck will do. Facing your chair, and you just have to be close enough so that you can hold on to it with your hands. Come in to Utkatasana, which is chair pose in yoga. Take your hips way back. Your knees track over the middle of your feet. 
hips go back, hips go back. Bring your tummy towards your thighs and bring your hands towards your chair seat. So I'm holding on to my chair seat here. At this point, lift your heels off the floor. So you're on your tippy toes. I hope you noticed I did not change my pelvis. My pelvis and hips still have that same relationship with my thighs. At this point, I'm going to keep that same relationship as I work to straighten my legs. At this point, I'm going to slowly lower the heels down, trying to maintain that relationship between my torso and my thighs. You're probably going to be feeling some stretch on the back of the legs at this point. To come out, straighten your arms. Hands to the hips, roll your shoulder blades on your back, lift your chest using the tummy muscles. Okay, I'm going to show you that again with the chair. Okay. Utkatasana, chair pose. Hips go way back, 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 back. Bringing the tummy closer to the thighs. Get that close relationship. You've got that hip hinge going on now. Hands come to the chair. Lift your heels. Keep that pelvis where it is. Straighten your legs, trying to maintain that relationship between the pelvis and the thighs, and then slowly lower your heels down, trying to maintain that relationship. So this is going to lengthen the back of your legs. To come out, straighten the arms, hands on the hips, strong roll of the shoulder blades, lift your chest forward using your belly to come out. Okay, that's using the chair. Now let's say that the chair is a little bit too easy for you. Okay, then you can always use your blocks. Okay, and don't forget, the blocks have many heights. Standing in front of your blocks, come into chair pose. Hips go way, way back. Notice that the hips go back, the knees don't go forward. Lift your belly, get that engagement. Bring your hands to your blocks. Now, I'm going to take the tummy toward my thighs, get that relationship between the tummy and the thighs. Lift my heels. At this point, straighten the legs. Notice I kept my torso and leg relationship. Slowly lower the heels down, keeping that same relationship. So this is going to stretch the back of the legs. Notice something else. Your hip hinging. You are not bending at your waist. How do we come up from here? Bring your hands to your hips. Roll your shoulder blades on the back. Press into your feet. Lift your chest forward using your tummy muscles. And relax that. Okay. So I hope this helps a little bit using either the chair, the blocks, just to stretch the back of the legs, learning how to hip hinge. Thank you for watching. Namaste.